Joseph Taylor. Mr. Taylor. Yes, sir. I'm checking your driving record here. You never had a ticket. You got a completely unblemished driving record here on tickets. It's your first one, and you're parked overnight. Your Honor, I live at a sober house, and uh, they don't have no parking there. I'm just mad I got to pay for, like, a parking permit when, you know, you got to pay rent there. You got to... It's just hard when you try to work. I just, you know, I got to pay a parking permit, so I figured I'll come before you and, and see if you can squash this. I just registered a truck. The insurance is killing me, uh, but, you know, I'm keeping the responsibility of... I'm going to help you with the things that, that I can help you with. Yes, sir. And the thing I can help you with is I'm going to dismiss the ticket. Thank you. And then I'm going to tell you that I'm rooting for you for your other issues. If you're at a sober house, then I know you've had some other issues. You appear to be in good health. You appear to be doing great. And I'm rooting for you, you. that you will continue on that path. I got confidence. Just look, I don't know you, but just looking at you, I know you're on the right path, and I'm proud of you. Well, it was a hard road to learn the hard way, but it's worth the way I am, and I'm happy. There was a fellow who was a uh, Major League Baseball player. His name was Joe Andrews. He came from either New Bedford or Fall River, and he played with Hank Aaron. And he was a great catcher, and he threw his arm out. But he had the same issue. And he made a speech once that I'll never forget. And he was talking about sobriety and overcoming the uh, issue of alcoholism. And he said, you know, a lot of people think they're tough because they're physically tough. He says that they can knock someone else out and that physically they can overpower people. He said, that's not being tough. He said, I'll tell you what being tough is. He said, being tough is looking at a drink and not taking it. You know, when every... Everything in your body is yearning for it. He says, that's tough, you know? And so I'm looking at you and I admire you for your, for your toughness and for your courage. I'm wishing you good luck. The case is dismissed. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, good luck. Thank you. I love the saying, it doesn't matter who you used to be. It only matters who you've become. Mr. Taylor was the perfect manifestation of that quote. Every day of his sobriety is a testament to the strength of his character. Most of us have friends and family members who have or who are currently battling addiction. I encourage everyone to recognize their struggle, to celebrate their victories, and to try not to judge them on their past, but to help them look forward to a happy and healthy future. morning. Your Honor, I was rushing to the hospital, so sick with pain all over my body. I didn't realize the light. Oh, well, let's take a look at this. Yeah. Which one is she? The last vehicle, Your Honor. Uh, stop it when the light's red, please. Uh, in the left-hand lane, the light is yellow. It is now red. The light is already red, and that's where your car is. Uh, let, the, let the video go. Ms. Davies. Yes, Your Honor. I was so sick, Your Honor. And I was rushing to the hospital. Yeah, you know, you've had, you've had 12 other tickets, so. Your Honor, I know. So, I mean, so 12 I'm times. I'm asking for clemency, sir. Clemency? Clemency is when you let people out of jail. I'm going to let you out after you leave. <laughs> Inspector Quinn. Yes, Your Honor. What do you think we do in this case? Inspector Quinn is the prosecuting officer. His, he carries a lot of weight around here. Do I ever? You think he carries a lot of weight, Miss Davies? Just have mercy on me, please. On the shoulders, right? Please, it's yes. The weight on the shoulders. <laughs> yes. Have mercy. <laughs> Inspector Quinn, how do you feel about this? Uh, Your Honor, I believe the video speaks for itself. Miss Davies, we're going to give you all the time you need to pay the ticket, but it was a flagrant violation. It wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. I was rushing to the hospital, so that was the reason why. What hospital were you going to? Um, to the um, Pawtucket. I have the paper here. You were going to Pawtucket? You were going, the turn you made, you were going the no, other way. Was, there I had an appointment. It was an appointment. <laughs> if you were going to Pawtucket, right, then you were going to go to Straight. Pawtucket through Cranston because you made a, 
Pawtucket was north. You, were, you made a, a turn to go south. Reluctantly, I have to charge you $85. We'll give you all the time you need to pay it. Thank you. Matthew McDonald. All right, you have an overnight parking ticket. Yes. What do you want to tell me about this? Uh, that there's no signage posted uh, about the I know that. restriction on that street. Yeah, I mean, you're from Rochester Hills. Um, Michigan. Michigan, oh. Do they allow overnight parking in uh, Michigan, uh, in Rochester Hills? Yes. They do? Yeah. Some municipalities allow it, others don't. My policy is that I usually forgive the first one for people from out of town because I know that they, I know the first thing they do when they come into town is not, is not to read the city ordinances. Believe it or not, I know that people don't read these. Inspector Quinn assumes everyone reads them before they move into town. If not, Your Honor, I'm more than willing to sell them a copy. As a matter of fact, it's uh, on sale today. Is it available on tape? <laughs> <laughs> so you can listen to it when you're driving back to Auburn Hills or Indian Hills or whatever it is. All right. Mr. McDonald, the matter is dismissed. Thank you. All rise and hit subscribe so you don't miss the latest viral moments like this one. Share these videos and weigh in on the cases. You be the judge. Subscribe now.